Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production. Last time I showed you how to create a format filter, and today I'm going to show you how you can you know, take that farther and do something fun with it. So we have our format filter here that we made an M Turbo filter. Sounds like this. We have that uh sound for our format filter. Now, one easy thing we have is I have this filter here that's just a low pass filter that isn't doing much. We can sometimes create interesting sounds just by modulating this. You can create that wah sound. Also, if you want to use a bandpass filter, I think sometimes that works better. So if I move the resonance up and move the bandpass like this. This will probably take off uh, lots of your volume, so I usually like to turn that up like this. So that's an easy way to get that wah, wah, wah sound. So that's an easy one, but let's turn that off. We don't really need that. Another way we can get a similar sound is by modulating the character like this. Now I'm doing this by hand, but let's use the power of M Sound Factory to modulate this. If you're using the standalone version of M Turbo Filter, you can also use the modulators in there to modulate it. Uh, so what we're gonna do is just take this, let's try first, try an LFO, see how that sounds. Make sure we set this character at the lowest point where it sounds good. I think that's probably there. And now move it up here. Depends on how much, let's try zero, around zero. And we can make this faster and slower like this. I think it usually sounds better slower, but you know, that's just me. Another way you can do this is if we don't want an LFO, we can use an envelope or what I like is these attack filters here. So if we open this up, this, you can see here, it's gonna go from that highest level to the lowest level and then we can change the time, etc. So let's try 100 milliseconds first. You can also sync this to the time of your song, uh, the quarter notes, eighth notes. Etc. So that's, uh, I think, kind of fun way you can do this. Uh, there's more things you could do with this if you wanted to. Uh, I could randomize this somehow. So instead of using the attack here, let's try note random. Every time I hit this, it's going to move to a different value between these. So I can probably increase this here. So I'm getting a wide range. So look at the green here and notice that every time I hit it, it's going to change. So this is kind of cool if you use this with an ARP here. I'm just gonna use one note, but each note you'll notice has a different sound to it like this. I like it a little bit faster like this. So I always think that's cool. Let's show a different way to do this if maybe I want to morph between these. Let me find the perfect uh, value for this. Turn this off there. I think that sounds good. Move this here. What I'm gonna do next is just copy this so we can morph between them. So copy, I'm gonna paste it four times. Three, four. And so we have this one doing uh. Let's change this to something else. Um, maybe E. This one, I don't know. Oh. And this one, I don't know, what should I do? Eh, eh, eh. 
So now that we have these four here, you're probably thinking like, okay, well, nothing's coming into them or out of them. So we just need to right click on them and set this input to one for all of them. But now they're all going to go out of these different lanes. Now you could do this, but for me, I, I really don't want this. If you wanted to process them separately in the effects section, you could do it that way, but I don't really need that. Why do I have this dynamic EQ, EQ on? I don't know why I had that on. Um, anyways, so I'm gonna just deactivate all these and we want everything to come out one. But for now, we just have this uh coming out of lane one. So we wanna combine these together. We could use a mixer here, but I'm gonna show you a better way for this at least. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find our ratio, but ratio only does two. We're gonna use ratio multi like this. Right click it and make sure we use the inputs for all these. Normally I'd use the steel input too, but since this is deactivated, we don't really need that. So one, two, three, and four like this. Okay, now I'm going to play this and I'm going to move between these like this. So that's cool. And the same thing here, what we could do is we could do an LFO like this. Go to the depth 100%. Now, I think that's pretty cool, but I think for this, something like the random works really well. Here we go. I'll make sure I put this back at 100%. And let's try that ARP again. So I think that's kind of cool, but that's just me. Maybe you don't like that. Uh, so that's a cool one. We could also change it by velocity, like this. So if I hit it, uh, low velocity. Oh, I'm sorry, I had the ARP on. That's why I said. The problem is you probably can't hear it when I'm hitting it with a low velocity. So we can change that in the globals. If we want every note to have the exact same volume, just go to velocity shape and we can change the range to zero like this. So now when I'm hitting it with different velocities, it's changing just the format filter, but it's not changing the volume. Oh, that's a cool thing you can do. Uh, there's a few other ones here that might be useful, like, let's see, flip-flop. Actually, I can do counter. Uh, let's try counter four. So what this is going to do is each time I hit it, it's going to move up slightly, hopefully 25% so this is even. So watch what's going to happen. So it's just going to divide it into fours, and each time I hit it, it's just going to count up, and when it gets to four, it's gonna go back to zero. This can be cool with an arpeggiator too. Move this down. So I think that's a cool one. Let's see. The other one that I think is really cool for this is using the Poly uh, polyphony, polyphony, I don't know which one is better. Um, so what this will do is when I play something, each note is going to be a different position on here. So if I play one note, sorry, let me turn the ARP off. The second note is going to be up at the top like this. First note is always going to be the bottom, which is ah sound, and the second note is going to be the eh sound, like this. And I'm using that with just the two polyphony, but you could do the same with the four polyphony here. So 
So you can hear each one is doing a different vowel sound, which I think is cool. You don't hear that much in a synthesizer. Actually, let me move this up a few octaves here. I'm sorry, I'm getting too loud in this case. I, that's where you really need to turn this back down. One more time. So each of them are doing a different vowel sound. So by using the format filters, there's a lot of different things you can do to give these, you know, slightly different sounds and do lots of fun things that you probably couldn't do any other way. So I think this is one of the strengths of in Sound Factory. And so the, you know, polyphonic stuff like this can't be done in the standalone filter, but it can be done in M Sound Factory. But in the standalone filter, there's lots of other cool things that you can do. So uh, be sure to check that out when it's released. For now, if you have M Sound Factory, you can check out M Turbo Filter inside it. And you can try to replicate some of these if you want, like this one, the OO, the E, the O, and the A sound yourself, or wait, and hopefully these will be included in M Sound Factory. So, if you like this, give me a thumbs up, leave me any questions and comments down below, and check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.